Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for joining me in this uh, talk. Uh, it's called on something that I said, Ansible. And I'm, you know, introduce first myself, so you know me. Um, my, my name is Guillermo Gomez. It's kind of difficult for Czech people to pronounce. So uh, I decided to go for the Nick Gizmo. So if you go to TPVC and ask for Gizmo, that's going to be me in the technology department. Okay. Uh, I'm from Venezuela. I have a master degree in electronics engineering. That meant six years in the university back then in Caracas, and I started my career as uh, working with a separate company, Alcatel. Probably you know them. And I worked for Alcatel six years. Then I worked for another company, German company, uh, that was based in Berlin, Portsmouth, and London. There were three sites, and they produced uh, Internet Applied. That was my first touch with Linux in 1999. Okay, um, if you want to know, I got my degree in 1994, so totally doing the math, yes. And uh, after going with DICA and the in Internet Linux Alliance, I really got interested in the Linux world. So uh, I start, you know, embracing the movement for free open source. I, uh, I tested all the distros as you probably did in your early stages on, you know, open source movement. Uh, we fought the wars, okay, so we won, okay. And uh, I spent a lot of time with Fedora. I was even part of the Fedora board during the 2011, 2012 uh, period. I went through translator, package, uh, packager, writer, ambassador, speaker, blogger, blah, blah, blah. I did it all with Fedora except developing software, okay? Most of my efforts in Fedora were based on uh, Latin America. So I pushed the communities in Venezuela, Argentina, Peru, Colombia, Bra even Brazil. Okay? So that's me. Um, and I started using Ansible, switching from uh, Ruby-driven uh, technologies after Python kind of uh, started killing Ruby. And uh, I'm a Rubyist, but I decided to go with uh, Ansible as a strategic decision in my career. So it was a good decision, okay? So I, I, I decided to go with Ansible and OpenShift, okay? So those are re good recommendations for anyone in their own careers. And I've been working with this uh, automating anything I can. My previous role was as, as a sysadmin in Red Hat for developers. I mean, I was in charge of um, maintaining internal platform for developers. In short, we were in charge of about 35 to 40 OpenShift clusters. Different architectures, different sizes, different platforms, bare metal, bare metal, virtual, open stack. So it was very complex environment. So for me, my success in PSI, or, okay, dealing with OpenShift was just based on Ansible. So barely I use OC commands with OpenShift during my time in that team for more than two years. And there is my you know, my new engineer colleague, Adam, he started an internship with us, and we develop a lot of Ansible code for testing those 35 clusters to know their status. Uh, probably many of you are gonna ask, well, what about Prometheus, Grafana, Splunk, and all those specific platforms? Well, those platforms all, always, they were not consolidated in an easy way, so they were not easy to consume. So for us, it was not really useful. So it was really useful just to test, can I create a project on this cluster now? Can I create a deployment on this cluster now? If it fails, I know something is wrong. So that was my job. Then I decided for another role, 
Now I'm a technical account manager. And now the challenge is, is different. Now I'm not dealing directly with the clusters because I have no voice, no keyboard to get into those clusters that are owned by my customers. But my customers has problems with them. I'm a technical account manager. In the end, that means support them. They have an issue. How can I support them? So my automation now is not dealing with the open shift that I control, but the open shift that I can simulate okay, in a laboratory and test the configuration of my customer and try to reproduce the problems they have and make this as quickly as possible. So this is my background. So you can uh, uh, ask me about this. So this talk in particular uh, is about how Ansible is related now with the containers world. So I'm going to try to get you engaged in the, in the talk and ask you about what is that you understand what is a container and what is the problem that the container is trying to solve. Soli, maybe you have an answer to this. Someone, what is a container? Nobody knows? Please, come on. A container. Is it a new concept for you? No, it isn't. It's a technology to encapsulate processes in their own environments. OK. What problem does it solve? Well, deployability. Deployability. What else? What does it exactly mean? Well, it means that we can deploy the container anywhere you want, so without actually needing to change the application that's within it. All right. I will add on that. That's great, OK? That for example, I just switched my laptop. My previous laptop uh, went expired the warranty. So Red Hat offers me the laptop, you know, with a very small cost, OK? So I decided to go for it. But in the process, I got wiped out my operating system. So I got my new Fedora installed. What you're seeing is the new Fedora 38. It's not the CSB. It's the standard Fedora uh, 38. The problem that I'm facing now is that, OK, I'm going to do my presentation tomorrow, and I need to install Ansible. And I need to install all these things. And you know what? <laughs> Between my Fedora and my RHEL, I started to have problems with the dependencies. So the container basically is solving a very old problem that is, in the end, very simple. You need to package all your dependencies in one of these little piece so you can be sure that you have what you need to run the piece of software that you want without colliding a neighbor. So many people come from the world of virtual machines. Virtual machines did the same thing, let's say, but in a very, very heavy way, OK? Very heavy. So you had to emulate the hardware. You have to emulate everything. On top, you have to put the operating system and so on. So you had a whole machine. Of course, it had some little benefits. OK? But that's what the container is. So how Ansible relates to this? That's what's the introduction about the tools I'm going to talk about. Because in the end, I'm going to fly through the slides. OK? It's more important what I'm telling you right now than what is on the slides. OK? <laughs> So in the previous iteration of Ansible through the web from Red Hat, it was, what was the name? Tower. So how Tower resolved the problem to solve, to actually run the playbooks, to run the work, uh, flow job templates, to run the job templates, it was, um, what was the name? Uh, virtual environment from Python. You needed, you know, those kind of a, uh, vessels with the dependencies you need to run your playbook, your workflow, your job template in a consistent manner. So uh, Tower evolved, but in the end, it, it, got very, it got really complex to keep up with this. And in parallel, the container wall started to, you know, raised. So it was obvious that we got to ditch you know, the virtual environments from Python and start using containers for running our playbooks. 
So this is the very basics about the presentation I'm gonna make. So you can see in the slide, we are, I'm talking about the dependency problem, the virtual environment, the problems when you need to patch the OS, okay? So there are two new tools that are based on containers that I'm gonna talk about. Those two new tools are Ansible Navigator. Who knows Ansible Navigator? Do you know a bit about Ansible Navigator? Okay, thank you. And the second tool is Ansible Builder. And even though I'm gonna through all this life very fast, concepts are pretty easy. Ansible Builder is gonna let you create an image for you to run your playbooks. And Ansible Navigator is basically a text user interface for you to run your playbooks and any, you know, playbooks that you had developed before. So I'm gonna switch right now. Uh, anybody has used before Builder? All right. Uh, who hasn't? Why? <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it looks like everybody already tested it. So I, I just, I just, uh, I, use different topics. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I'm, I need to switch to the terminal right now, but the idea of Builder is, you know, kind of uh, uh, the tool just to create your image, whatever image you need. Basically, uh, based on the OCI format, even though it does support the Docker file, the Docker format also for the containers, okay? No, no, that's another world too. Uh, the good, what I do like about Builder is, uh, it supports script format, scripting format. It means you create a simple bash script and you end up with an image. You realize that or you're always using a Docker file? Who had used a script for creating an image? What is the, what, what is the virtue of using the script? Repeatability, what else? You can do whatever you want because it's a script. It's not just a Docker file. So you can, you know, do whatever what is you do right now with your knowledge based in Bash. And on top of this, you create your image. So that's what Builder is. Okay, I'm not gonna go into the terminal. You don't have the time for this. I'm gonna review a little also flash about what are the commands that we have in Ansible. Uh, we have a, a lot of them. Okay, probably some of them you never tried before. I'm not gonna count of them. And then we have it finally, Ansible Navigator. It's a text UI. The analogy I came up with is the M MCLI. So we all are used to, in the old times, IEF config, interface config for network, and then IP something and all the, you know, the parameters, it's very complex, it's very powerful, but at the same time, it's very hard, okay? So the, the, the text UI kind of uh, fits in the middle to solve day-by-day -day problems. So nowadays, for example, and, and, and that was a surprise. I showed this, uh, uh, an engineer at Red Hat, and I showed NMTUI, and he said, hey, I never saw that before. <laughs> really? All right, so, cool. But for me, it was obvious, okay? You don't, you don't, you don't have a, a graphics user interface. You don't have a genome shell. You just SSH into your machine. Then you, this kind of tool simplifies that you don't know all the details about the commands of IP, you know, details. So Ansible Navigator is like this. And on top of this, it adds some functionalities. That's where the analogy ends. So this is the command, and then where the problem starts, actually. 
This is where the problem starts. So I, I, I got into the dependency problems trying to solve the dependency problem. You see how, 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 how painful this is. Yes, so I, I tried this in the Fedora. I got, a, I got an Ansible core version, blah, blah, blah. I, got, I tried this on the RHEL 8, and I ended up with another version. It was a mess, OK? Still a mess, OK? And then I'm trying to figure out. But in the end, the goal is to get an image that is going to work. Oof. So when you get it installed, this is what you're going to get, OK? You can run all those commands like collections, config, doc, help, image. There is a lot of functionality here. So the main point of Ansible Navigators is to consolidate to make it easier to consume all these things that actually Ansible provides you. It's not a replacement. Again, it's like the Network Manager CLI. It adds, it adds some new features and it makes it easier for you to run some stuff or to debug some stuff. One of the, for example, interesting features is the line number for, uh, 13, which means replay. Ansible navigators give you this option that when you run your playbook and something goes wrong, then you can actually replay <laughs> the run without actually running against the target but just in your machine through the logs. It's like a dump. So it goes through the dump and shows you all the other steps, and you can, let's say, trace every step on your playbook and debug it without actually touching the target system. This is one of the very nicest features that you can uh, use on Ansible Navigator. Uh, this is the help. This is basic information regarding the releases. I'm going to make available the presentation for you, so you're going to have the links. I guess you can pretty much get that information uh, easily. So for example, just to run like a regular playbook, you can just call Ansible Navigator run my playbook. And you can run it in a non-interactive way. Actually, exactly with adding in minus M STD out. So it kind of behaves. This is the regular Ansible playbook. Output, you know this. And this is the Ansible Navigator run output. It looks pretty the same with the same playbook. Nice. But if you run it without the non-interactive, you're going to get this. And when you get this, you can press 0, which is the uh, play number 0 in your playbook. You're going to get the tasks list one by one, zero and one. In this case, you just have a playbook with two tasks. So task number one, got in facts. Second task, print something about my laptop. But then you can press again zero or one on the left. And this is what you get. You're going to get all the details of your task. Run your step here. You see? So you don't have to go and rerun the program, include the verbosity or whatsoever. It's everything already there. Okay? And when you run for the first time Ansible Navigator against your playbook, this is what happened. It's going to try to pull an image. So this is the key part for you to understand. Your playbook is not running based on your operating system installation of Ansible. It's going to run inside that container. You're going to spawn an image. Uh, you're going to pull the image. You're going to run the container. And you're going to pass everything in there. It's going to run. And then you're going to pull out all the, all the details out of it. In this case, this screen, uh, screenshot shows that uh, by default, at that time that I create this, it was pulling Ansible Automation Platform 2.3. EE, EE means execution environment, uh, supported rel, blah, blah, blah. So now you can uh, uh, look forward that the new Ansible Automation Platform is based on this. So the new Ansible Automation Platform is based on the execution environment, which is a base image. So this whole talk is about on containerized Ansible. 
So the idea is you're gonna create images or you're gonna consume images to run your playbooks. So uh, this is, here's a quick mapping between the Ansible CLI and TUI. And, and TUI. Not very important. Uh, new functionalities. One of the uh, cutest things is about inspecting collections. Uh, the replay you already mentioned. Now about the configuration. You can actually run Ansible Navigator config. So it's gonna start gathering information about your actual configuration. And this is a nice thing because again, when you try to run your playbook, you're wondering, ah, how is it configured? What is it configured? Well, you know, all those things that you maybe you're not aware about at the moment you run your playbook. When you run Ansible Navigate Config, you're gonna get all the information in your screen. What values are you using? What source it's pulling this configuration parameter in? So in this case, all the green lights, green lights, lines are just telling you that it's using the defaults. And the two lines that are not in green is where uh, they were changed somewhere, okay? Here. Then, of course, you have some configurations that you can tweak. For example, uh, obviously you can uh, have a environment variable telling what is the uh, config file. You can use the Ansible Navigate.yml or in the home folder, the uh, not visible Ansible, not Ansible Navigator YAML. There you have, it's a YAML, it's a complex, I mean, there, is a, there are a lot of parameters that you can tweak. One of these is about the execution environment that you're gonna use, okay? So I mentioned already execution environments. Uh, three things is when you use uh, Ansible Automation Platform, obviously you're gonna consume uh, base images provided by Red Hat, certified by Red Hat, so you're gonna get support on those, okay? You can uh, use other images or you can create your own. In this case, I took uh, just a screenshot on what is being used now in my Fedora installation. The image is called creator-ee, and that's the version. And that's an example of using a different image from the CLI-EEI with my image. Maybe your image, now I'm just putting very simple examples, but imagine your image includes the Kubernetes modules that you need. Or you're including you know, many other modules that you need to use in your playbook. Uh, what else? Settings, my image, collections. Again, when you run the command, you're gonna get all the information in your path. The recommendation is when you create your new Ansible automation project, if you create a path, you put everything in there. Your configuration uh, files, your Ansible CFG, your Ansible Navigator, YAML, and so on, you put everything in there. So when you run Ansible Navigator Collections in that path, you're gonna get all the information that your environment is seeing. So you're not gonna get confused at all what is available for your environment at the wrong time. You can actually explore them. You see the index on the left? So if you press, uh, I'm going for Ansible POS 6, Ansible POS 6 is the number five, and then I get all the modules that include in the Ansible POS 6, and if I press again one of the index on the left, I'm gonna get actually a lot of information about that module, even the examples, okay? So you don't need to go Google, blah, 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 Ansible module, no. 
You're going to browse your collections. You're going to be able to look at the modules that are installed in your environment. And you're going to be able even to see who to email and blame about something, OK? <laughs> That's cool. That's it about Ansible Navigator. Um, of course, there are a lot of more things there. This is just a kind of eye-opening uh, presentation. I'm going to fly through Builder because I just have 10 minutes more. Uh, I already told you this is about creating new images for Ansible Navigator or Ansible Automation Platform. Okay. I just installed it yesterday, and the current version of Ansible Builder is 3.0.0 in Fedora 38. It doesn't match with my RHEL 8, and that was all the mess up started. This is the basic help online. It works based on a YAML definition. And right now, the key point here is the version. Right now, it supports three versions, one, two, three and you have to go through the documentation exactly what every parameter means, but it's kind of a readable. Dependencies, Ansible Galaxy, base image, Python things that, are, that need to be included in your image. And here are some examples of the files involved. So for example, the requirements, YAML, my list, the collection that you need to be installed in the image, the bin depth, it's uh, about the system. You need the binary git in your image available, so you, you can specify, you will specify like this. And there you're gonna specify your Python libraries needed in your environment. After you make this, well, this is one of the extra uh, slides that I need to put yesterday. I was trying to make this uh, presentation shorter, but I figured, so this is important about the versions. Version 1 is supporting all Ansible versions. Version 2, 1.2. In version 3, version and version Ansible Builder version 3.0. This is a typical run. In this case, I'm just adding minus V3 just to block everything in my screen to see how is it working. You can see that it's actually using podman build command to create your image. And if you, this is the result after all my, my uh, plays with this, the uh, Ansible execution environment was the custom created with Ansible Builder, the meetup, UBI minimum, it was created with the Builder script, and the UBI minimal is the base image from, from Red Hat, from UBI. So that's it. I made uh, the 10 minutes for you to start shooting me at, uh, for question and so on. Thank you very much, thank you for the patience, and uh, now it's on you. No. No. Oh, that's a package. He has to repeat. Ah, I need to repeat the question. Oh, my good friend, your name? Andrea. Andrea is asking about the uh, software distribution packaging for Ansible Navigation and Builder. And no, they are only available through uh, PIP. And I think they distribute some zip files uh, from the Git repos on GitHub. And that's it. So it's an opportunity for packagers. If they're willing to do that. Okay. Other questions? Proceed. Really? It was so clear. So it's a success. Thank you very much again.